speech has talked to you a bit more about why this is effective, particularly why we should use the WHO, why this is the most effective strategy. Um, and then also talked to you about some nice moral arguments, because like we like principal arguments and I thought I'd throw them in there anyway. <laughs> Firstly, law of rebuttal. So we had this characterization from the opposition to be like, are you okay staying in Texas for 15 years? I mean, like, maybe, uh, <laughs> but probably an unlikely scenario, because firstly, quarantine exists. That will probably take about two or three weeks, depending upon the disease. I can go there and then, like, leave. Um, and secondly, these measures are always temporary. When Yugoslavia closed its borders to spread, prevent the spread of smallpox, that was for two months. I can cope with that, right? I mean, I may be a little bit bigger by the time I leave, or the fast food, but it's probably doable. They then said, well, the problem is you'll have, like, no free flow of doctors because, like, firstly, people won't be able to get it. I mean, we obviously said that they could, we'll actively encourage it. Maybe if the WHO has control of borders, that would be even easier because, you know, they like doctors. Um, they then said, well, these people won't go because they don't want to risk going to, like, a country where they can't leave. They're going to a country where they're risking getting Ebola and dying, right? These are people who are willing to put their lives on the line. It's unlikely the possibility of having to rebook their flight for two months later is going to be the thing that deters them. Nonsense. He then said, well, you know, it's not effective to police borders. I mean, it's generally more effective than not policing borders. Right? Firstly, like flights. You can stop flights. Maybe if we've done that, we wouldn't have Ebola in Texas or in Europe. That would probably be good. Land borders, right? I mean, it's not entirely effective, but it's better than not doing anything. To be clear, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and, 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 and um, have all closed their land borders, which has helped prevent the spread being worse. The things of well, actually, the WHO has said that like closing borders is not a good idea. I mean, if that's true, which it isn't, then I don't know why they're so concerned that the WHO is going to like violate sovereignty and take over all of Africa. Um, but secondly, they actually haven't, right? They've said to Liberia and Sierra Leone that actually it's a good idea that you close your borders and that you have kind of management so we can track the spread better. But then said, well, it's a violation of sovereignty. Again, no analysis of why the WHO wants to take over the world. But also, countries voluntarily want to do this. It is not in their interest to spread disease to their neighbours. Yugoslavia voluntarily closed its borders. Uh, uh, Sierra Leone and Liberia voluntarily closed their borders. Yeah. The issue with why we need the WHO is that these countries often have a very limited ability to actually enact that and to police their borders, and they also need to get the international response. If we place the WHO in a position of responsibility, they have the ability to coordinate an effective international response that combines international aid with policing of borders. You put the responsibility on the international community to not only provide aid, but to prevent the spread of disease. That's why it's better. They then say, well, people <coughs> will react violently. People are currently reacting violently. That's not because they can't leave their countries. The vast majority of people in Liberia and Sierra Leone have no ability to leave their countries. They're reacting violently because Ebola is in their countries. What we're saying is we're going to stop the spread of Ebola. It's a lot easier to manage unrest in one country than it is in ten. Therefore, on balance, we win that point. Right, morally justified. We exist in a world where closed borders are the de facto moral assumption, right? I mean, you live in Texas, you should know this. The Texas-Mexico border isn't exactly a free and easy zone. That's the kind of state that we live in. Even if you have situations where you relax those constraints, where you say that certain citizens can come over and where you can have open borders, that's done by, like, international agreement. So, for instance, we can come over and all we have to say is we were never a member of the Communist Party or a defendant of the Nuremberg Trials. And you're like, well, that's probably okay. Oh, and we're not related to Osama bin Laden. You're kind of keen on that as well. <laughs> the other thing is you can have a humanitarian exception. So in certain instances, we relax the state of closed borders to allow refugees from a civil war. But we only do that where there's not a significant cost to the population of the country that they're entering into, right? In the case where there is a significant cost, such as when the Rwanda genocide heirs went over into the Democratic Republic of Congo, the international community said that the Democratic Republic of Congo had a right to push those refugees back because they were creating war in DRC. Similarly, those fleeing Ebola in Guinea and then spreading it to Liberia and Sierra Leone have actually created higher casualties in Sierra Leone and Liberia than were initially in Guinea. We think that actually the international community has a duty to, prevent, to protect the citizens of Liberia and Sierra Leone from the, from the spread of Ebola. We think this is the same when you had the SARS epidemic and when you had the smallpox epidemic. Fundamentally, there is a duty upon states to protect their own people. 
There is a duty on the international community to pr protect people from the spread of disease. There is no duty on the international community to allow people to go through open borders simply because there is disease in their area. Then, uh, that's time. So any questions? want to close their borders now? Yes, that's why Liberia and Sierra Leone currently have border controls in operation. So then, why does the World Health Organization have to make that decision for them? Why do they need that power? Because they are better placed to make that decision. Because they are the ones who initially said, this is a disease that spreads rapidly. What, it is something what that we in need the to status quo I'm still events. speaking? <laughs> yeah, no, they're good. I understand you're saying that they are good at doing that. Uh, my question is, why... Uh, why, what is preventing them from doing that kind of consulting work and physical aid that they are so good at in the status quo? Okay, so if you listen to my speech, I told you specifically that states have competing incentives. <laughs> what they have is an incentive to close their borders to prevent the spread of disease, but also to encourage international aid. When you have the WHO in charge of it, they are able to perform both of those roles simultaneously. It is much more difficult for states to close their borders and also then encourage uh, organizations to come in. The, work, the World Health Organization will act quicker and it will do it better and more effectively. It is the expert who should allow it to Is do there it. a disadvantage to them making that decision and then letting the World Health Organization run it? Uh, no, I think the World Health Organization is better placed than most states to do this because it has, again, lack of so competing incentives. If there is no barrier to allowing the World Health Organization to run it, why is it necessary to overturn the legal precedent? It's necessary to overturn the legal precedent exactly because I said the situation in Liberia and Sierra Leone is they have closed their borders and they did it too late. They did it later than the recommendations of WHO and as a result Ebola has spread here. Okay. If the so, WHO was in charge, it would not have come here. My question then, uh, you made an argument about being able to contain <coughs> refugees. How would the WHO be able to keep out refugees or keep in refugees? So again, if you were listening to Alice's speech, she told you quite specifically that you have soldiers, I mean the UN has soldiers that it can fall on, which it can police borders. That's not a problem. We have these systems in place to do that. Why would... Why is the World Health Organization key to having UN soldiers? Uh, because they are aligned bodies, and that's how the international community works. The WHO does the health stuff, and the so UN how do they how do they keep them out? Well, how, uh, how do they keep them out? You have closed borders. Uh, well, right, that's an idea. Do they shoot them? Uh, I mean, ideally not. Not everywhere is the Mar is America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're here, and I'm here, and you want to come through me, and I'm bigger than you, so I'd be like, no, you can't. <laughs> and that works for a family that's fighting for their survival that will try and go through anyway, you'll just, people can just stand there? Are we holding hands around the border? Uh, I mean, like, walls exist, you can build fences, they're quite easy to go up. Like, so build a wall around the border. Operate the, I mean, yeah, build a 